Hi, good morning. It's May 21st, Thursday. It is my off day, and I'm here at my hair salon to finally get my hair done. It's definitely been the longest streak that I've gone in quite some time of getting my hair done. I usually get my hair redone every 10 to 12 weeks, but I think it's been closer to like 14 to 16 weeks. So I am so excited to finally get this hair done. It's gonna feel so good. But also today, I got something for the first time in over two months. I got a Starbucks. I usually always order Starbucks through my app, so I was able to like go back and look when the last time I actually ordered a Starbucks. And it was February 14th, Valentine's Day. And so that was also the last time I got my hair done. So here we are a little over two months. I got me a Starbucks. I just went with a, um, I just went with like the Cloud Macchiato hot coffee that they had. I don't, I've never had it, but it was pretty good. And then I went with my chicken sausage biscuit that I love to get from them. Love that so much. So I enjoyed that on my drive here to Montgomery, Alabama. Yes, I do get my hair done an hour away from Auburn, but it's so worth it. I will follow Sarah wherever she goes because she definitely does the best. But hi, how are y'all? Just checking in. But this is my normal off day because normally this would be my working weekend and it is Memorial Day weekend. But I took off a long time ago because I get so tired because I feel like I always work the holiday weekends because I was not going to miss the first official lake weekend. Now I don't even think we're doing, going to the lake. I think we're actually going to go to the beach now. But with that being said, my pharmacy is actually closed on Monday as well. And then Tuesday is also my normal off day because I usually get the Thursday and Tuesday off of the weekend that I work. And um, when I work a weekend, I work uh, Friday through Monday. But since we're closed Monday and I have today off and I have Tuesday off, that means yesterday on Wednesday when I got off work at 3.30, that started my little mini vacation. So I don't have to go back to work until next Wednesday. So I have basically like a six day mini vacation away from work and y'all, I could not be more happier. I am so happy to just get away from work and just enjoy myself, just doing whatever. I think, like I said, I think we're gonna go to the beach and I'm just, oh, I'm so ready for a nice little vacation, but Anyways, I am about to go in here for my hair appointment. It's at 8 o'clock. It's almost 8 o'clock right now. I don't really know what we have planned for today. As soon as I get done with my hair, I am planning on just going ahead and getting my workout on. So I guess I can take y'all to the gym because now the gyms are officially open. And it's just going to be a fun day. So I guess I'll catch y'all in a couple hours when my hair is done. And finally, take off this mask. It's caught in my ear. <laughs> Woo! All right. I'm looking nice and blonde and fresh again. And Sarah's always so sweet and she always puts some curls or some waves with a straightener. I don't know how to do that. I've never been able to do that technique, but she always does it for me as a nice little touch. And I'm sad that I'm about to probably go ruin it with getting super sweaty at the gym, but that's part of my plan. It's a l almost, ooh, we got out We got out pretty, pretty early day. It's almost 11 o'clock right now. I've got to head back to Auburn and then I guess we're just gonna go straight to the gym.
o'clock. That was a really long gym session. I, I probably didn't start actually working out till about around 12 o'clock because I spent a really long time warming up and stretching because my body is just sore. You know, I got back in the gym last week, so I feel like I'm still sore from that. And then I just am always really sore at the end of the week from work. So I'm just kind of like achy. So I spent a really long time warming up and stretching. So maybe I didn't actually start working out until like 12, 15. I don't know. I didn't really pay attention to the clock. All I know is that it took forever. And I was like, oh my gosh, I got to go. Because here in a few minutes, because it's 1.50 right now, I'm going to hop on a conference call with work. And normally on my off day, I would not do anything work-related like this. Like I wouldn't even go in for a conference call like that because... Y'all know my off days are my off days and I cherish those so much. But um, they're talking about some really important stuff. Instead of someone taking notes for me or relaying that information back to me, I want to hear it firsthand. So I can just call in on the conference call and dial in. And I can just put it like on mute so that way I can continue to do what I'm doing. And actually what I'm planning on doing is while I'm on the conference call, I'm just going to mute it, go about my business here in the house. I'm actually probably going to actively stretch again because I had a really good workout today and I'm super proud of myself. I wasn't sure because I will admit since I have been back in a gym, um, like strength is not, I wouldn't say that it's like strength feels weak. I just feel like my endurance as far as like completing the reps is not really there or not up to par. So I'm getting fatigued really easily. And um, I really pushed myself today and I was so happy because I was able to hit my percentages and my reps. So just to kind of combat that soreness, I'm going to stretch while I listen on the conference call. But real quick, I'm going to have me a post-workout shake and a post-workout carb source. I guess I'm not going to really truly eat lunch today because like I said, here it is almost 2 o'clock. And I haven't really eaten like any whole food since... I guess Starbucks this morning, early this morning. I did have, I didn't show it, but I did have a Pop-Tart as my pre-workout um, before the gym today, like on the way from my hair appointment to Auburn. But I'm gonna be using, um, as my post-workout shake, I'm gonna be using this Vegan Power Pro Protein by First Form, of course. I decided to try the vegan protein because I hadn't tried their vegan products yet. And of course, like, no, I'm not vegan, nor do I try to pretend like I ever want to practice to be one. Like, I'm definitely an omnivore. I eat meats, fruits, and vegetables. That's just how I am. But I heard that the consistency of this was really good. And so I was just really curious because I go through phases with like protein powders. And so since I hadn't gotten like a new protein powder in a long time, I was like, let me give this a try. They ain't lying. This is super thick, like super thick. Um... I actually put in the, I actually use more water than it recommends because I find if I use the recommended amount of water, which I think they actually recommend um, in six ounces, I do eight ounces, eight to ten ounces. I think that helps with the perfect consistency, but it is really good just mixed with water. I do find that if you try to use a milk product with it, it is like super, super thick. So I, I would just suggest using just strict water with it, but I got it in the chocolate flavor. I think it, there's a vanilla, I think there's like a peanut butter cup chocolate one, and then there's just the regular chocolate one. I'm a chocolate girl, so that's the flavor I went with. So I'm gonna do me a post-workout shake in a shaker cup. Then I'm gonna have a serving of this rice Chex Mix. This is just a plain flavor. I couldn't find the honey flavor the first time I bought this. I do have the honey kind, but I'm trying to use this up right now. So I'm just gonna have a serving of this. And a protein shake and then we're gonna get on a conference call and then I guess I'll see y'all in a little bit it is gonna send them your pharmacy manager's name the store's phone number uh, and the RxM email address so coming after 6-1 I would really Make sure that you and your team are all expecting potential calls, emails. Just got off my pharmacy conference call meeting. Um, just a lot of like pharmacy manager behind the business scenes talk going on. So kind of a lot of the things that I already knew about, but they just kind of went into a little bit more depth on there. But one thing that I did find out about my pharmacy in particular 
if you've been watching my past couple of videos during all this pandemic and everything, my pharmacy has been nine to nine. And I've expressed a lot about how great it's been that we have been nine to nine. And just the sheer fact of me being able to get home before my bedtime, before 10 o'clock at night when I do close, um, I do close the most at my pharmacy with me being a pharmacy manager, which I don't know how that happened, but it's been so nice. It's been such a blessing to like close at somewhat a decent time or just to get that hour back and like all the other pharmacists have just really enjoyed it and it's just been a really good experience. But as I got news today from one of my floater pharmacists, <sighs> that tranquility and peace and happiness is coming to an end because of, I think on June 4th they said that we're going back to normal hours of 8 to 10. No! <laughs> it's been so nice to have just that hour difference. Like, man, what that hour difference does. But that's coming to an end. So I guess for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to really enjoy being a nine to nine pharmacy. I really wish our pharmacy would go to a 12 hour pharmacy. No, I don't want to do 12 hour shifts because I've done 12 hour shifts in the past in retail pharmacy and that is just a, a death sentence and I just don't want to do that personally. Now, especially for like my lifestyle and everything that I enjoy to do outside of work. It might be different if I was not really a homebody or didn't go to the gym or didn't have other things out you know, in my life outside of work, but that's not the case. So, and I could only imagine one day when I have a family or if I had, you know, kids, if I was having to do 12 hour shifts, like all the time and try to go to the gym and whatnot and just do everything else in my life outside of work, that would be so tough. So props to all of y'all pharmacists or just in general who work 12 hour shifts. Like I've been there, done that, and I don't ever want to have to do that again, really. But, um, I wish that we could be a nine to nine pharmacy, but still have like eight hour shifts and just kind of, you know, wish you could have that overlap or maybe do some eight hour shifts, or some shorter shifts to make up that 12 hour time. But so yeah, there's that. But anywho, I'm not going to talk about work because we are on a mini vacation. I don't want to have to talk about work. I talk a lot about it here on YouTube, probably a little more than I should. Probably express a little bit more of my opinions more than I should, but oh, one thing I don't think I've told y'all about, I mentioned it briefly on my Instagram story, but speaking about YouTube and work and whatnot, I had a person email me a couple of weeks ago, the beginning of this month, the beginning of May, from Betty. So whoever Betty is, if you're watching this YouTube channel, thank you very much up front, but she informed me that I was actually featured in the Pharmacy Times Pharmacy Career Magazine. And, you know, for those of you who are pharmacists, you know what Pharmacy Times is. It's like one of the biggest magazines out there in the industry of pharmacy. But for those who don't know, like I just said, it is one of the most popular pharmacy topic magazines that you get. So one of the magazines that Pharmacy Times publishes is called Pharmacy Careers. She was telling me that she recently wrote an article about how pharmacists use YouTube to advocate for the pharmacy profession and she wanted to let me know that she had actually featured me in that article. So I just thought that was so cool. She sent me the link and I went and found it. But it was so weird to go in there and see the link and see there was like a screenshot of one of my most recent like pharmacy videos posted on there and she wrote like a really nice blurb on there about me. So I'll put the link in the description box so y'all can check that out. But I just thought that was really cool. I don't know, it, it just makes me feel good to know that um, like I, I'm not just doing this just to do it for like views. Like I thoroughly enjoy sharing a good part of my life and especially about my pharmacy career in hopes that it makes an impact, it influences people in a positive way that people can just learn or take something away from the things I show, the things I talk about. And I really enjoy just, again, just being just sharing my life, the good, the bad, being transparent, and just being like an advocate as well for the profession. There's just so much like good and bad, but I feel like there's a heavy emphasis on bad in the retail corporate world. I'm just happy that my voice is like being heard for that. And I'm just gonna keep fighting for us and just being a voice and being an advocate in any way that I can. She didn't mention particularly about my channel being like a health and wellness focused channel and how you can do this and have a full-time career and be a busy bee like me, but still make it work, still hit your goals, still achieve the things you want in life, whether that's fitness or just other things outside of work. I was just very thankful and felt just, I don't know, just really honored, I guess. And I would say humbled, but if you ever boast about something that you're mentioning, I don't know how much 
humility you're showing in that sense. But regardless of that, I was very humbled and honored to know that she chose me to talk about in that article as well, as well as many other people that she mentioned as, as well in that article. But like I said, I'll post it down in the description box below if y'all want to check it out. In lieu of that, I just want to say thank you. I don't know if I say it enough. I probably don't, but just want to say thank you so much for just all the love and support and the positivity that I do get for my channel. If it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't keep doing what I do. And so just moments like this or times like this in my life is what really keeps me motivated and like keeps me going and really, you know, posting videos and about different topics. So I just want to say thank you. And thank you very much to Betty who suggested me and wrote an article about me. So I appreciate that very much. But right now it's 345. I haven't taken Slater on the walk today. Usually I would do that right after my workout, but you know, as I mentioned, I had the conference call. I think what I'm going to do is just wait a little bit later and I'm actually going to go ahead and do my Bible study. So I wanted to share the current book that I am reading and what my Bible study is focusing on. And this is a really, really great book, especially for those who are Christians or followers of Jesus. This is a really great book that I would highly recommend. And it's something that's very true and very convicting, like even personally convicting. And the title of it is The Unsaved Christian. Reaching Cultural Christianity with the Gospel by Dean and Sarah. So this is a really good book that talks a lot about what's going on in today's society, specifically in America, about cultural Christianity. It's really highlighting the areas or the inconsistencies or just the insincerities. It really highlights the areas of what is called cultural Christianity. So like not true Christianity or what a Christ-like person should be doing or believing or how they should be living and it really points out the flaws in America about how people can on the surface appear that they are a Christian they do all the you know they do all the traditions all the things that are kind of normal of Christianity but they don't actually know or believe in the gospel they don't follow the gospel or they don't follow the true word of god in a sense just based on their actions and so this has just been a really good book because i mean there's been a lot of points in there a lot of areas in my life that i can identify with personally that mm, i was like oh my gosh i feel like this is talking about me and it, it is a really good book it, it's a really um humbling book and it a really it's not meant to be offending or to shame on you, you know, if you are a person who is a believer and it may point out some things that you do, but you may not have realized that you do do or it's a way that you live your life. But it is very personally convicting and pointing out the flaws in modern day Christianity. I've really enjoyed going through it. I just think this would be a really great book for those who are really looking to dig deep into what Christianity is and just kind of see the falsehood, the misrepresentation that you are seeing in modern America today. Just a really great way to dig deeper into the Bible, the true word of God, and just to really strengthen your faith in your Christianity. So I highly recommend this book. And so that's what I'm going to dig into right now. That's all I got for right now. So I guess I will See y'all in the next clip. I just got done making Cody and I some dinner. I made a home chef meal. It is the egg, the pork egg roll in a bowl. Who you talking to? I'm talking to YouTube. Who are you talking to with your nerdy video games? Hateful. <laughs> your dad is a nerd. Thanks, honey. You're welcome. Enjoy. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> Okay, and I myself is about to chow down on this pork, what is it even called? This pork egg roll bowl. Watch a little TV and relax for a night, and that's going to be the end of the video. So, very short and sweet video, I believe. Not a whole lot to it, but just wanted to pop in and say hello. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye, y'all.